But I don't want to get too excited about it either because I gotta be careful how deep I go now. So I'm taking another row of thinning, what I would call thinning flakes, very similar to what you would do if you were flint napping. I'm just going down through here and taking another row and creating another row of ridges inside here. And then I can go right back over the top of those ridges again and create another set of ridges here across the bottom just like this this will give me that primitive look and then I can also come from the other direction because you're cutting directly across the grain here just turn the bowl around and come from the other direction A little blood splatter on here a couple places. I got a little slice of my thumb right there. I didn't even feel it happen. That's how sharp these tools are. But I started noticing blood on the bowl here and there, so that's what happened there. Just kind of working down the high spots with a spoke shave here. Getting this bottom shaped a little bit better. Get it flattened out so it'll sit nice and flat. Remember, I don't want too fine a finish on this because I want it to look rustic. But I like that chipped finish look to it. Okay, so remember that we're trying to leave this pretty rustic. So I've smoothed the bottom off of the spoke shave just so that it sits well. But I've left the sides more chipped looking and less smooth like the inside here has been left. I've got a little bit of trim work to do here. I need to come back with this pouring trough just to shade right here to even it up from here to here. And then I'm going to call it good. Okay, guys, well, pretty much got this thing finished up as far as the work goes with the carving. I've got a little trough right here where I can pour liquid out. Got a nice big bowl here to mix doughs, bannocks, and baking goods in as well or just a good eating bowl if I choose to use it for that. It's nice heavy poplar, now it needs to dry. I left it a little bit thick on purpose because I don't want it to crack. And I left most of the primitive type carving work in here as well as on the outsides here and then I smoothed everything else nice and smooth so the bowl sits nice and smooth when it's sitting down. Took me a couple days to get this done 
Making a primitive bowl like this is quite a bit of work. I use an axe, I use some North Bay Forge carving tools, I used a Mora push knife, and in the end I used a Wood River spoke shave as well. And that's basically all the tools I used to carve this wooden bowl. I appreciate you joining me for this video. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.